Yeah, everybody, this is Alex. And uh, given the circumstances with uh, self-isolation and not being be, being able to uh, get back to, with the, let's say, the latest news in person or at events and conventions, I, did decide, I decided to have a quick sit down with uh, the one and only Alexey Vladishev, the CEO and founder of Zabbix, just to check how things are going, what are plans for the future, what's the current situation in the company, and so forth. So, Alexei, first of all, welcome. And before we start with all the business discussions, tell me how are you? The situation is a bit confusing for everyone. Some people are, you know, are under the weather, but I hope you're doing fine. How's the, how are you? How's the boss? How's Alexei? How's the family? Yeah, good morning, everyone. Yeah, well, thank you for asking. Well, I'm doing well, thank you. And uh, nowadays, I'm a little bit in kind of multitasking mode because of work from home. And the fact that I need to supervise three of my kids that are studying remotely. So, well, it's not easy sometimes, uh, as I prefer to be more focused on the things I do. But anyway, in regards of the, the, the situation, you probably mean the COVID situation. I'm, I'm very happy that we at Zabbix reacted super fast. Uh, well, by purchasing laptops and letting, well, actually forcing people work from home. Even before our government announced those uh, special situation here, and I think that the experience we are getting, we are kind of collecting right now during the remote period of work, it will be very useful for us uh, as a company in the future. So, well, nowadays Zoom, Skype, and other messengers are our best friends. Well, right. but other than that, well, everything is going pretty smoothly. All right, good. Very sweet. Not only being responsible as a father, but also as a CEO, as one should. Okay, so Alexei, a couple of weeks ago, we celebrated the 15th anniversary of Zabbix. 15 years is, well, that's quite an achievement. So this all started as a personal project of yours, but then in 2005, you decided to establish a company. So when you planted the seed, is this anything that you've actually envisioned? How are we keeping up with your personal dream or vision? For the company, the product? Well, absolutely not. I couldn't imagine the future. Yeah, I think that uh, 15 years ago, I had the very different expectations. Yeah, it was some sort of experiment. I thought, okay, I will establish a company around Zabbix, my open source pet project, I would say, and we'll see where it goes. But remember that uh, 15 years ago, there was literally no good examples of businesses doing the same thing. Yeah. Red Hat was the only exception, I guess. So it was quite a risky decision, I guess. Um, even now, uh, if you look around, that most of the so-called open source companies in reality just follow open core business model developing proprietary solution. And in this sense, Zabbix is quite a unique example of successful growing bootstrap business built around open source software. I'm very, very excited about it. And personally, for me, this 15 years delivered a steep learning curve. Uh, it was kind of a period of transition of a typical sysadmin. That's how I started my IT career to, to someone who's in charge of the whole company. So that was a really exciting time. Good stuff. All right. So if we take a look at this entire journey, how have things changed, not just for you, but as you personally are involved with pretty much everything uh, that is happening within the company, right? So how do you see the changes within the actual team and the community? Was there ever a point where you just saw the big picture and thought to yourself that this is escalating and growing far faster than you've ever anticipated? Well, not really. Remember that the product started even like four years before the company started. The company was established and uh, it was a really kind of organic growth all the time. It wasn't like a aha moment, like I discovered, okay, so Zabbix is going to be uh, a big thing or something like that. And nowadays, Zabbix is the result of work of many people and great engineers I'm very proud of working with. And uh, it really... The Zabbix team, it gives us ability to improve Zabbix and build a better product much, much faster. Not like uh, at the very early days when I was the only one who was doing basically everything. Yeah, But we still need to be very careful when it comes to priorities, so about the prioritization of our work. And now our team is located in four offices in Riga, Tokyo, Moscow, New York. And it really gives us advantage of being closer to our users and customers. 
Also, why it's important? It's important because the different markets have different needs and goods and good understanding of those uh, specific requirements is really, really important. And if we are talking about business, that then I have to thank our partners that play an extremely important role in delivering Zabbix software and services to end users. And our customers have a great opportunity to get Zabbix services and product knowledge from local partners that speak the same language in nearly all countries around the world. So obviously, Zabbix being open source software is nothing without a community. And uh, uh, speaking about community, I do really believe that Zabbix community is the best and the most friendly one. Yeah, even even if you just started with Zabbix, you're a newbie and you have many kind of starter questions. The community community is uh, here to help. Yeah, so I mean, it's Zabbix. I think it's just an example of kind of organic growth. Remember that it's a bootstrap company. We don't have any VCs on board, so it's about. Um, it's, it's about the grinding growth, actually. Yeah, that's it. Excellent. Couldn't have said it better myself. Okay, so Alexei, we've uh, talked about, let's say, the history. We've scratched the surface of the current situation. Let's talk about the immediate future. So fairly soon, I'm not going to say the date, of course, uh, we are to release Zabbix 5.0. So what are the coolest features you're most excited about and that will benefit our users and customers? Could you please give us some insight to that? Well, I don't think I'm the best person to ask this type of question. I think that this question should be actually addressed to Zabbix users. And uh, speaking about 5.0, there are more than 70 enhancements and, and new features, uh, which, which will be released very, very soon. And it's not easy to choose a, a specific one. And I think the different groups of users have different priorities in regards of monitoring and regards of how they use Zabbix. And I'm sure that, for example, the enterprise users will enjoy the built-in support of single sign-on thanks to SAML authentication, which is coming Zabbix 5.0, by the way. And uh, we have also introduced many security-related features, including support of macros for keeping various secrets like a password, authentication tokens and keys, which might be really, really important and critical for, for example, for a cloud monitoring uh, and, and monitoring of critical environments. And we, we also made a number of performance related improvements to make sure that Zabbix is capable of dealing with the, the million of monitored devices. As Zabbix grows, uh, we see that obviously uh, Zabbix gets implemented uh, for monitoring of a bigger and large scale environments, uh, environments of, of, of bigger customers. Uh, but anyway, I believe that all users will enjoy the fact that Zabbix now comes with a large set of ready to use integrations with, say, alerting and ITSM systems such as, to name a few, just Jira, PagerDuty, or ServiceNow, VictorOps, Slack, Microsoft Teams, and many, many others. And if they combine, if we combine it with the front-end improvements and new ways of automation and discovery and either creating of solutions or templates for monitoring of specific devices or services, I think that the whole set of features we already have in Zabbix and, and which will be introduced in Zabbix 5.0, 5 uh, it basically delivers a very good monitoring platform aimed to many different use cases and scenarios. So... Well, Zabbix 5.0 is, uh, is around the corner. Well, well, stay tuned. It will be announced very, very soon. Excellent stuff. Thank you, Alexei. So, okay, keeping a track of features, that's one thing, right? So obviously our users can uh, go to our website, check out the roadmap. They can check out the release notes for any, uh, every minor update. But not a lot of them actually know how is the roadmap established? So what's the, what's the... What's the decision process behind that, right? So, okay, when, when, you sit, when you sit down with the development team or by yourself and you think, okay, what do we want to see in the next version? What will benefit our users the most, right? So how do you, how do you take, let's say, all those feature requests that we have and all your, let's say, personal uh, desires and vision and incorporate them all into a solid, stable release? Well, it's it's a very, very good question. Uh, and the roadmap defines the future of the product. And if we look back in the early days of Zabbix, 
uh, I was really trying to make a solution for solving my problems and challenges, yeah, but, but, but not anymore. Now we have a product that is used by tens of thousands of users and they have very different requirements and expectations. So suddenly a roadmap is not an easy thing anymore, yeah? In case of Zabbix, roadmap is composed basically of a few blocks of uh, different features requests, yeah? We have uh, some technical debt or refactoring that just we have to do in order to make our product further, right? We also have the block of some strategic features which are really important and that would define the future of our product. We have also sponsor development. And sponsor development is when uh, our customers and users w w would like to improve certain parts of uh, Zabbix and they pay for these, those improvements. And, and well, of course, we have some bug reports. And I guess the main trick here is to prepare kind of a, a good mix of all of it. Yeah. If they decide, for example, not to work on bug report, then existing users that maybe suffer from some bugs will be unhappy. If they decide to focus on the sponsored development only, then at the very end, we will do a product which will be very specific to some groups or, or some customers. So uh, I think the art of the roadmap creation is all about finding and establishing a good balance between the different stakeholders. That's how it works in a nutshell. And I'm in charge of Zabbix roadmap, and I see a roadmap as a very long, prioritized list of things we need to develop. And because of that, sometimes it's rather difficult for me to answer a questions like, what is coming Zabbix 5.2? What is planned for Zabbix 5.4? Because I know like, like hundreds of top priority things we should to do, but I don't know precisely when it's going to be implemented. So it, it's, if everything goes fine, some particular feature might be implemented 5.2. If not, it will be postponed to 5.4, for example. And besides... Uh, the situation and market changes quite rapidly and functionality we thought is important or was important one year ago might not be in our priority list one year later. And it happens sometimes. So therefore, the, the roadmap, the list of things is not a static, it is dynamic and may change anytime depending on strategic decisions. So and it depends on the, on the situation of the market. If we, if we have a look at the development process of Zabbix, the development process in Zabbix is very strict and it is pretty much standardized. We always start development of any feature with RFP, or we call this uh, ACC document. ACC stands for Acceptance Specification Document, which describes uh, acceptance criteria and why we develop this feature. Then this document gets reviewed. It is pretty high-level document, right? And it gets reviewed, then reviewed once again, and then it goes to dev team. And then dev team creates technical specifications that clarifies implementation details. It contains very technical information about how this particular feature or functionality should be implemented, tested, and, and documented. And only when a feature is developed, it is uh, code reviewed and tested by dev team and QA team and documented, is considered to be finished. I think that the main goal of the whole process is to ensure the quality of the product and create a very good and solid framework for efficient work on our, of our dev team. And uh, the process right now is very well defined and I believe it produces great results. Excellent. Thank you very much for that insight. So Alexei, you mentioned two things that I cannot simply ignore now, right? So you said like, Okay, looking into the future, that's very important, and that it's very difficult to, uh, let's say, provide a specific response whether or not a particular feature would be implemented in a certain release. So, without, uh, let's say, specifically focusing on a release, be it 5.0, 5.2, 5.4, whatever, what can we look forward to in the future? Is there a particular piece of technology that you are excited yourself about, right? So, like, you just look at it and say, I want that. I want that in Zabbix. Maybe not this year, maybe not next year, but I want that and I will have it. Well, being in universal monitoring solution is is, is not easy. Yeah? Since, since we have to deal and support the many technologies and different use cases our end users have. So, well, talking about the future, I'm very excited about being able to apply some machine learning techniques to monitoring. So this is the one thing. It might be 
a very useful thing, uh, and it would help to to manage large scale monitoring and may also provide a great insights for to DevOps team and infrastructure teams. Also, we are at this moment we are quite active in regards of the cl cloud monitoring. Yeah, so Zabbix is already available in a different public clouds like AWS, Azure, or GCP. But uh, we still lack a little bit of kind of, of ready to use solutions to monitor those cloud technologies. So this is another thing I would like to see in Zabbix very very soon, and we are actually working on it right now. I also would like to make Zabbix to be a cloud native application with the built-in high availability, redundancy, and ability to scale on demand. And these are, I guess, the major things, among many others, of course, that you may expect to see in Zabbix very soon. Excellent. Thank you very much for that, Alexei. So before we round up, we start off let's say, more or less informal on a personal level. And that's how I'd like to finish this interview with you as well, right? So the company is one thing, the product is one thing. Let's talk about you a bit more, Alexei, right? So what is the dream for you? Sure, you are excited to see the company grow. You're excited to see the product develop and our community grow as well. But let's say, what is the wish, right? What is the dream that you would like to put out there and strive for? Well, I... What I miss right now, I, I really miss a direct face-to-face -face communication with my colleagues and Zabbix users very much. And, and despite the fact that the COVID didn't affect our operations much, I do hope that the difficult times for all people will be over soon and we will be all back to the normal life. And, well, I guess that's the only and the most important thing I'm dreaming right now. <laughs> Fair <laughs> enough. Fair enough. Thank you, Alexei. All right, yeah, you're folks, very welcome. All well, right, folks. Well, there you have it, right? So from the man himself, Alexei Vladishev, the CEO and the founder of Zabbix, we hope you all stay safe and stay healthy. And hopefully soon this will be over and we will see you face to face, not just on the forums, not just uh, in the bug trackers or support tickets or anywhere, but on any conventions, any Zabbix meetups. And just have a, a nice, friendly, long-awaited reunion. Thank you all sure. very much. Thank Take you. Take care. Thank you.